Hi, I'm Bonnie Browning with the American Quilter Society, and do we have a fun day planned for you today? I'm here in the studio with Jenny and Faith. They're going to be my helpers, and we're going to make what we call the Bolly Pops Dash. It's a crib quilt, and we'll be doing this at our AQS Quilt Week in Lancaster, Pennsylvania in March. And we hope that all of you will just take a little peek at this video and then come join us and make some charity quilts in Lancaster. First of all, I want to tell you just a little bit about the supplies we need because it isn't very many. First of all, we have one package of Bolly Pops and the fabrics are all being donated by Hoffman California Fabrics. We'll be using two bobbins full of thread to put this together and we use two feet. We use the quarter inch foot and right now I have a foot on the machine that just has a little red dot in the middle and you'll see why we need that little red dot in just a minute. A pair of scissors, uh, we will be using batting and that will be donated by Hobbs Bonded Fibers. Uh, we'll be using Sullivan's Basting Spray to be able to put our quilts together before they're quilted and they also will be providing rotary cutters, mats and rulers for us. And all of our thread is being provided by Superior Threads. So all you need to do is just come to the uh, Quiltathon on Thursday evening and have a blast with us. And you know what, I bet we're gonna have some prizes while we're there. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our package of Bolly Pops. And I'll just give you a little tip on choosing your fabric. It helps to have some high contrast. And so you can see as I open this one up that we have some light lime greens, we have uh, oranges, blues, hot pinks. And we're just gonna take this and open the whole thing up and lay them out here on the table. The first step that we'll do is we're just going to take all of these strips, sew them right sides together. Now a lot of times on, on uh, batiks like this you can't tell, but many times you can tell. One side will be just a little bit lighter than the other. Now I made one of these as a sample and I made a mistake and so I'm going to tell you what it is so that you don't do it too. And that was that I put these together because we're going to sew these so that you have a, an angled seam. We're going to put the two pieces right side together and I'm just going to test it so that I know that when I sew my angled seam, like you would if you were making bias to go on your binding, that I have it sewn in the correct angle. So you can see there it kind of made a little crease. So now we're going to put that, and remember I told you to use that foot with the little red dot on it? Well, here's why you want that little red dot, because now you can aim that little red dot from where you're going to start sewing until you get to the other end of the piece. And I don't use any pins when I sew this together. I just let that dot be my guide right across the fabric. And so we're going to begin to sew now, and we're just going to sew, sew, sew. And you see that I've got my finger positioned so that there's that seam. It's all done. All right, now I sewed on the back side of that, so I'm going to pick up the right side, pick up the next piece of fabric, right sides together, and I'm just going to continue sewing exactly that same way, one piece after the other. Line it up with your little red dot. Get my finger over here so I have my target. And I will tell you about the speed on your sewing machine. Um, you know, we have everything from the turtle to the jackrabbit. I don't know about you, but I can't control the machine when I'm in the jackrabbit mode, so I put it somewhere in the middle. All right, now, Faith, you see that I have sewn, I have sewn two pieces of fabric here. This was the first one. All right, now your job is that you're going to hang on to this piece of fabric because when we get these all sewn, I have to have that piece back to be able to continue on. And as I get a few more sewn here, Jenny, you're going to take your scissors and you're just going to trim off the excess that you see here. And I would trim so that you're trimming at an angle there, leave a fourth of an inch seam and then and then trim off the angle right there. When we get to that spot, I'll stop and I'll show you exactly how to do it. It just helps to have there. You're going to hang on to that though, because that's going to be really important. The longest part to do this is to pick up one piece and put it on top of another. 
because you can see it doesn't take very long to sew it. Making sure I've got the right side facing up. Grab the next piece, right sides together, under the presser foot, and on we go. You're going to take your scissors and you're just going to clip the thread in between the two pieces. And so now you see that that begins to give us our big long streamer, doesn't it? So if you take the scissors and you trim it even with that piece, and then you're just going to turn and leave our seam allowance. And now when you get to the other end, you just trim it even with that. And when we do that kind of trimming, then when we open this up, you can see that we don't have any tails sticking out on either end, do we? So that'll just make it go really fast when we get ready to sew these big seams together. So you can just, as I get a couple more pieces out there, you can start just sew, uh, trimming away. Altogether, there are 40 pieces that we're sewing end to end. So we will end up with 1,600 inches of fabric, all in one big long strip. This is our dash. We're certainly, we're calling this the Bolly Pops dash so that it's a fast project. Fun and easy and anyone can do it because it's just straight line stitching. This certainly does make a really fast uh, gift for a child or a lap robe or an infant. You know, sometimes we all need those. This is the last one. We're almost there. Okay, now we're ready for the next step. We have all of our strips sewn end to end, 1600 inches in one big long strip. Now the key to making this really nice in your quilt is we're gonna take the end that I have and we're gonna cut off 18 inches of fabric. And now what this does is it's going to stagger all of those joints that we just put in there. If we left them like they are now, by the time you got your quilt done, all of those joints would be on the outside edges. This way, it will bring them into the center of the quilt and they'll kind of zigzag back and forth down the center of the quilt. All right now, Faith, you know, I told you your important part was that you were gonna hang on to that and then hand it to me under the table, right? It's time to do that. You might have to crawl under there and hand, can you put it in my hand? There we go. All right, now you may have to help that fabric come to me a little bit. Now, what I have to do is I, as I pull these two pieces together is I wanna make sure I have right sides together and our seam allowance will always be on the outside, on the, on the back side. I have the right side of this one. And so now we're gonna start sewing. And this is the fun part because now I could put the pedal down. Oh, one more step. We're going to sew a fourth of an inch seam allowance. And because we're going to sew a fourth of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to use the quarter inch foot. So I'm going to change my foot out so that I'm using the quarter inch foot. We have this blade, and as we slide the fabric underneath it, it will catch on that blade and make sure that we have an exact quarter inch seam allowance. You will probably have to adjust your, your sewing machine uh, to have an exact quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now we're ready for the next step. I've cut off 18 inches from one end, and now we're gonna, I've got both ends, the beginning end that Faith had, and the end that we, that we ended at the very, um, on the very last strip, and so now I'm gonna sew these together with a fourth of an inch seam allowance, and we're just gonna sew like the wind. Now this is one of those times when you can just sit here and, and enjoy, and the only thing you have to do is kind of line up those edges and just sew, sew, sew. Every once in a while, we'll have to stop and readjust. See, I'm at that point now. And I just want to talk a little bit about the seam allowances. I'm just going to finger press those as I hold this together. So I have a seam allowance right there, and I'm just going to hold that in my finger so that when I get to it, I hold it right where it needs to be. So again, there are no pins needed for this process. 
And we'll just get a little space going here and we'll just sew along. Now, you know, we started with 1600 inches and now we're sewing those together. So we'll end up with 800 inches on this round. And again, you see, I have another seam allowance here. So I'm just gonna hold that in my finger so that I can hold it down and, and sew over the top of it when I get there. When we do our quilt-a-thon in Lancaster, we will be sewing on an Elna machine, just like I'm sewing on here today. And boy, you can see how nice and quiet it is too. It's a nice running machine. Again, I have a seam allowance and I'm just gonna fold that seam allowance toward me hold it in position, and sew right over the top of it. There we go, I just sewed right over the top of that seam allowance. Here comes another one, and again, I'm just gonna fold that toward me. Really, the most time consuming part is just getting the pieces all put together so that you can just sew down the seam. This would be a good project to start with your, uh, with your granddaughters and your daughters. Or if you've never done any sewing, this would be a good project for you to start on. They don't know it yet, but we're gonna have Faith and Ginny in here sewing some seams on this before we get too far. I'll do this long one and then we'll let them get into action here. But do you see how pretty the fabrics mix when you do it this way? Because what we started with at the one end gets a join to the ones that we ended with. And you begin to see as you get down here a little ways, you begin to see that you're some of your fabric kind of looks like it's twisted, but we'll get it all straightened out as we move along. Here I am going along and I should have right sides together. Well, I have right sides of the fabric, but when I joined them, I joined them wrong sides together. So we're just gonna fix this very easily by, I'm just gonna cut it off and we will re-sew that seam. And so it won't stall us, but just a few seconds when you realize that you might've done that. So right sides to right sides. They should go together like this. And if you want to test that now, you want to just fold it back and make sure that you've got it where it should overlap a fourth of an inch on each side. So I'm going to just cut my thread right where I am so that I can pull that out of there and we can fix this seam. You know, one of the things about sewing is that there are not many things that we can't fix. Um, our, instead of using paint, we're using fabric. Uh, but you know what? There are all kinds of ways for us to be able to make adjustments when we make some kind of an error like this. So I'm just going to re-sew this seam. Line up my edges here. Sew across. Cut my thread. And now we should be able to put right sides together and the seam is on the right side. I didn't do that on purpose either, I have to tell you. I just must have picked them up wrong. And now no one will be the wiser that we had a little mistake right there in the middle, will they? Because we just fixed it. Okay, now we're almost coming to the end and you can see that I have a nice little fold here. You also could come to the end and this would be twisted. And if that's the case, we're just gonna take our scissors and slide it into this fold. Either way, whether it's straight or twisted, and you're just gonna cut it off. So that now I have two pieces and they're separated. And then we're just gonna sew right off the end and our first seam is all completely done. Okay, now the tricky part is, is that we want to make sure that we have the same edge, front and back. All right, so we want to take this and we want to catch, we're just going to go all the way along from one end to the other, 
to make sure that I have this edge and the same edge on the other end, okay? And that we don't get them twisted. Okay, so here was my first end, and this was the end that we made sure that we were lining up. So I'm just going to align those two, and now we're just going to take all of this and we're going to drop it at my feet. You'll notice I did not backstitch. You know, we'll be sewing over all of these seams, so we don't normally backstitch when we do this kind of piecing together to make a quilt. Okay, now I am going to show you. You see I've come up to the first seam here. Okay, you see here that the seam allowance was pressed this direction when we did the first seam. We need to make sure the seam allowance on this side is the same direction so that when we press all of this, that'll make a nice smooth seam for us. So I'm just going to hold it with my fingers and then just sew right across it. Okay, now I'm going to show you one on the bottom side. Here's one on the bottom side and it comes toward me and it did before so it's okay the way it is. It'll be the ones that'll be on top that we'll have to make that adjustment. Now you're coming up on one of those seams and once you get it nice and flat then put your finger there kind of like a pin mm -hmm. up until you feed it through the needle. Okay now this is our second seam and you can see that we're now at the end and again just like we did in the first time we're going to take the scissors and just cut that so that it'll be even across the edge. So just take your scissors and cut right on that fold. Okay, now you can finish up your seam. So we want to make sure that we have the same edge all the way along here so that we can put right sides together. And then we'll start on our next seam. Goodness. So this will be seam number three. So that's the one and I'm holding this one. So this is the edge that needs to go on it. And I'll get this one started and then we'll let Faith do a little sewing. Now Faith, have you ever sewed on a sewing machine before? This is your very first time? Well, look at you. You're doing a great job. Do you think sewing is fun? I bet now you're gonna wanna use your mother's sewing machine, aren't you? Yes, I bet you are. <laughs> And just let the machine do the work and pull it in and just you're just going to guide. That's a girl. Okay, now hit the scissors. Okay, now we're ready for the next time. All right, so here's my edge and here's this edge. And so you see it's getting smaller and smaller, isn't it? One more. So just bring me one of the other ends. Yep, there we go. Yeah, how fun is that? Okay, now the one thing we need to do is make sure we line up those edges before I do this final cut. Okay, one more little snip. Okay, are you all ready for the big reveal? Jeannie and Faith, why don't you just walk right over there and show us what our Bolly Pops Dash quilt looks like. Oh, and look how beautiful. Pretty colors. And you can make this quilt in about an hour and a half start to finish when you use the Bolly Pops. And so now we've finished our Bolly Pops Dash quilt. I want to thank Ginny and Faith for being my great helpers and for helping sewing this quilt together. And we hope you will all join us on Thursday, March 13th at the Lancaster County Convention Center for our Bolly Pops Dash Quiltathon. We're going to have a lot of fun and we want you to come make one of these quilts with us. We'll see you in Lancaster in March. <laughs>